for the wrong reasons in history. But what if I told you, Abeni, that if your sister had been born in the right place several centuries ago, having sickle cell disease was actually a great thing. What? How could that ever be a great thing? Remember playing dodgeball in PE? Uh, we don't have any other classes at this school but yours. Uh, let, well, let's say you randomly picked up a yellow jersey that day, whereas everyone else wore the school colors. This would help you, wouldn't it? You would have an advantage over the others due to that random change. And over time, you'd be the last one standing, unless someone else had a yellow jersey. And you'd be the only ones left to survive and reproduce. That's called fitness. Over time, that trait was naturally selected as being favorable to survive and reproduce. Natural selection is one mechanism or way that brings about the evolution of organisms, the change in heritable traits within a population across generations. Now, unlike you being able to choose your jersey, that change in the trait would have been... Oh, a random mutation. Absolutely. So another example, let's say we have a bacterium with a random mutation that gave it an advantage that helps it to survive the effects of antibiotics. This is called resistance, right? And the ones that are not resistant die off. But that leaves the resistant bacteria around to just survive and reproduce. And eventually across generations, you end up with just bacteria that can resist certain antibiotics. And the same thing can happen with pesticides and bugs, right, Matt? <laughs> and even the same with sickle cell. In Africa and certain other places of the globe, having sickled blood cells, which is a mutation, protected inhabitants from malaria, a disease spread by a parasite carried by mosquitoes. And it uses blood cells to reproduce. And it's very deadly. Oh, so like with sickled blood cells, you were safe. Right. And those with sickled blood cells were able to survive and reproduce much more than the others. But it depends on the environment. If you take those people and take them to an environment where malaria isn't a threat, over time, it won't be an advantage anymore. Well, that's cool with sickle cell, but we don't need any resistant bacteria. How have y'all learned all of this science and we haven't found a way to get rid of bacteria yet? Well, first of all, you're low-key related to bacteria. Oh, he got you, bruh. Okay, everything is not a diss. There's actually evidence that we descend from a cell that is like a bacterium. In fact, there's evidence that all living things descend from bacteria. Hold up. My mama told me that all mankind came from... Okay, we're not going to go there right now. None of this is to refute or convert any beliefs just to discuss the evidence that supports these explanations and how the science that we've already learned in class can support it as well, okay? Okay. One, we already learned that some of the organelles in our cells already resemble and function similar to bacteria. And you may think that this well, this bat and this hippo, they're not similar to you on the outside, but what about on the inside? we could compare the skeletons of these organisms to see how they are similar. Look at this structure, right? You use your hand to hold and pick things up, whereas this whale uses it to swim, this bat uses it to fly, and they can't pick anything up, but they are structurally the same. We call these homologous structures. And this suggests that they all descended from a common ancestor. We call this descent with modification. We can't just go based off of looks or even function because there are certain structures that have the same function. All of these wings here help them to fly, but they don't have the same structure. These are called analogous structures. There are also vestigial structures, like the fact that you have a tailbone, like some of these animals actually have tails, but it isn't used anymore or how looking at the fossil record, we can see that whales used to have bones that resemble hind legs. In fact, in some whales, you can still find these bones. There's even more evidence of this by examining embryos. B 
before we're born. We can see very clearly that humans and whales have leg buds and arm buds early on. And of course, these become your arms and your legs, but for whales, it stops developing. And if that doesn't convince you, we could even look at their protein sequences, right? Like this. Which organism is most closely related to humans? I'm gonna go with the dog, right? They're man's best friend. Uh, it would be the pig. Exactly. There's only one amino acid difference there. What, so we evolved from pigs? I thought we evolved from apes. Uh, you didn't necessarily evolve from apes. You just share a very close ancestor with apes. Nor did you evolve from pigs. It's just that you and pigs share a closer common ancestor than a dog or a whale. Okay, and there were differences along the way that gave us an advantage. So, well, what advantage is my hair texture? Yeah, and like, what's the advantage for my good look? Ooh, boy, stop, that is a disadvantage. Okay, every variation is not prevalent because it gave some sort of advantage. Let's take these finches, a particular type of bird that Charles Darwin studied. Yes, there are certain bird beaks that provide an advantage for survival. And you'll find more of that species in a certain area of the Galapagos Islands where he studied. But every trait that you find in a species is not because it was more advantageous. Sometimes these genes just drift. Uh, what? Okay. <laughs> yes, genetic drift is another mechanism of evolution. So let's say a natural disaster occurred and wiped out these particular types. And now we only see these two types. Or maybe they went to an uninhabited island and began reproducing there. And now that particular species is all we see on that island. It wouldn't be because they were more fit or had an advantage. It was just random chance that brought that about. And things like this can happen so much or over long periods of time that new species will form. This is called speciation. It can be due to barriers, which would be allopatric speciation. And sometimes these barriers aren't physical. There could be behavioral barriers like mating differences. This would be sympatric speciation. So you're telling me there can be all these different species of birds, but I'm supposed to be related to a pig and a whale and bacteria? Something's not right. We are not supposed to be in the same group. Hold on, I didn't say anything about you all being in the same group. But remember, biology is the study of living things, and there are too many of them. Just as we discussed how the environment they live in can be categorized as a hierarchy, the same can be done for living things themselves. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned to what? Right. Gosh. Are we not paying attention? Like, I don't understand. What advantage is my hair texture? Yeah, and like, what's the advantage for my good look? Ooh, boy, stop. That is a disadvantage. Okay.